again, I got a cut in 1989, and my next one didn't come until, uh, didn't, well, the record came out in 90, and, excuse me, I got the cut in 89, and my next cut didn't come until 97. So uh, it ta it's, it's a 10-year town. It really is. It takes, it takes 10 years to get your feet on the ground. You got a question? Yes. Um, we all, at any level, deal with you know, discouraging periods. So during that eight years, what, what kept you fired up? What kept you going? Man, that's a great question. I, I tell you, uh, well, two things. I tell you the truth. When I, 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 I quit the music business for a while, I, actually, I became a Christian in 1990, and I thought that meant giving up the 10 things I liked doing the most and start <laughs> and doing the 10 things I hated doing the most, you know. So that's kind of where I went for a while. And most people, when they become Christians, they do that, you know, and I did. I'm no exception. But uh, I kind of you know, quit the music business altogether. Now, if I was going to do music, it had to be gospel music. And uh, I figured out in a hurry that, gosh, I think I had a better chance of living, a, of, of not being corrupted by my peers by staying in country music and staying out of gospel music, you know. <laughs> I didn't say that. I did not say that out loud. I don't mean that. But uh, uh, I decided I got, you know, I, I, I'd met this girl and I was in love and I was going to get married. And, and uh I said, well, it was time to get serious, and I enrolled in law school. And I got up on a Monday morning, and I got my chinos on, and my button down, and my book bag, and I was ready to head out. I paid my fees, the whole thing, I was in. And I talked my best friend into going with me. I'm coming to your question, I promise you, but I like to talk. So, uh, and I literally, at 6.30 in the morning, I, I'm walking out the door, and I just drop my bag. I said, God, anything but this. I, I can't be a lawyer. I can't do this. So I didn't show up. And uh, I got married. Quit my, I had this job and I quit it. And my father-in-law was really pissed off at me. And uh, we stayed in Memphis for another nine months and, and moved up to Nashville. And, and in my mind, uh, I kept thinking, I'm, I'm in the music business, I'm gonna get rich. I'm gonna write that big hit that's gonna make me rich. I'm gonna make the record that's gonna sell a million copies and make me rich, whatever it is. And I kept setting these deadlines. If I don't have something going by this particular time, if something's not happening, then I'm going to go back to Memphis and go to law school, whatever it was I was going to do. And the deadline would come. And I'd have, I got a record deal, but I didn't have any money coming in. But God, I got this record deal, so okay, I'm going to, I'm going to extend it by six months. So I'd do that, and the, the uh, uh, six months would expire, and I'd say, well, man, I'm almost done with the record, and the label's really excited about it, and I set another deadline six months later. And then I had two kids, and I lost my record deal, and my publisher wouldn't pay me, and he wouldn't let me out of my deal. And we were finding a grocery store that took a credit card. You know, the swipe is a recent invention, when you think about it. In 96, you couldn't find a grocery store that took a credit card. It was very hard. But we, we found one, and that, that day, I walked in, and I said, uh, my wife and I to the grocery store. We had a bag full of groceries with diapers and formula and, you know, crap. And, and uh, the guy, the lady behind the counter said, Miss Rutherford, you know, it's a small town when everybody's outside of Nolensville, outside of Nashville. They said, Miss Rutherford, now we, uh, sorry, uh, we've got a, a check here that, that bounced from last week. Do you want to cover that check or do you want to pay for groceries? And I said, we're going to cover the check. And we did and, and uh, went and found a grocery store, took a credit card. So we're coming up the back steps of the house. I got groceries like this and my wife's got groceries. and. They, you know, carrying a baby carrier and another baby toddling up the stairs. And it was kind of, it was, it was, it was uh, uh, the 29th of January, 1996. It was kind of a gray day, the sun was setting, kind of cold, and, and uh, leaves were off the trees, and I get the winter blues. You guys get the winter blues? You know, I do. I think creative people are more prone to that. So I was already kind of feeling a funk, and uh, I said, Allie, what if this is it? She said, what do you mean? I said, what if this is the music business? What if it's just always an uphill battle and we're beating our brains out and working our asses out? We're not getting anywhere. And uh, she says, uh, well, are, are we still together? I said, well, yeah. She said, I'm good. I said, you're happy. You don't mind doing this? She said, no. I was where to go. And I, I literally remember sitting at the kitchen table and started thinking, you know, I've been trying to get rich out of this thing. And, I, and I'm not thinking about what is my, what's my purpose? Why am I here? What am I, you know? I've ignored the thing that makes me me and concentrated on the thing that I hope I want, you know, what am I trying to say? 
you can follow what I'm trying to say. I, I, I'm ignoring what my purpose in life is, and I'm trying to get rich. And so I sat down, I had a business card somebody had given me, and, and I pulled it out of my wallet, and I wrote on the back of it, on 125.96, I accepted the fact in faith, because I didn't hear any voices, and I didn't see any sky writing across the you know, sky. I accepted the fact in faith that God Almighty has placed me in the music business in accordance with and fulfillment of his will. And I signed it. And uh, I carried that in my wallet for years, which now I keep it in a drawer. But uh, from then on, when I started thinking, you know, my deadline has come and gone, and I'm still not making any money. I t no, I, I'm in the music business. That's what I do. The, the, the outcome of this is not up to me to decide. All I can do is write songs, sing them, play them for people, do the best I know how to do. And what happens with it is not up to me. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it's great. It's a long story. You didn't get successful in divorce your wife. Uh, actually, we're, we're, uh, I'm best sick of her, ready to trade her in. No, I'm kidding. That's not true. She, uh, that's the biggest asset I've got there. I, I did a day's work, and she said yes. <laughs> got one. Good. Thank you. Um, I can't sing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm having serious vocal issues, but I'll do the best I can with her. No excuses. I hear the guitar. When I get where I'm going To the far side of the sky The first thing that I'm going to do Is spread my wings and fly I'm going to land beside a lion Run my fingers through his mouth then I find out what it's like to ride a drop of rain. Yeah, when I get where I'm going, there'll be only happy tears. I will shed the sins and struggles I have carried all these years, and I'll leave my heart wide open. I will love and have no fear oh, When I get where I'm going Don't cry for me down here I'm gonna walk with my granddad He'll match me step for step And I'll tell him how we've missed him Every minute since he left then I lug his neck, man, when I get where I'm going There'll be only happy tears I will shed the sins and struggles I have carried all these years And I'll leave my heart wide open I will love and have no fear yeah, when I get where I'm going Don't cry for me down here So much pain and so much darkness In this world we stumble through Questions I can't answer And so much work to do But when I get where I'm going And I see my maker's face I'll spend forever in the light Of his amazing grace Yeah, when I get where I'm going Yeah.